welcome to the 2018 board meeting. Uh, this is our project that we have uh, created together to come up with a brand new innovation for Apple Incorporated. Um, we've dubbed this the Silver Lining Initiative. Uh, everybody knows that Apple Incorporated is one of the most profitable companies in the world. Uh, they're one of the most popular companies in the world simply off of name recognition alone. So their consumer electronics have <clears throat> ravaged the market for years, ever since the creation of the iPhone in 2007, uh, starting with way back with the Macintosh computers and uh, other Apple products. But there's one division that they have not decided to enter yet. And this is our innovation. Um, our goal is to launch a gaming division within Apple Incorporated by releasing both a hand, handheld console and a household console, dubbed the Cloud9 and the Cloud Lite. Those are preliminary names. Um, we just believe that those fit the, they fit the vision of what we're trying to uh, complete. Um, this way, Apple would be able to enter the video game market and compete with the big companies in that specific market, such as Microsoft and Sony, and other mobile markets as well, such as Android, Asus, and Razer. How does Apple achieve this? We're gonna achieve this by integrating a new software into a console for everyday use. iOS has done this uh, numerous times with their phones, uh, coming up with brand new updates that are able to keep the software running user friendly and other different features and capabilities. Uh, and then they transferred over to Mac operating system, which is able to run specific engines uh, for video games such as Frostbite and Unreal and Unity and other, uh, other engines of that nature. Um, so once we do that and we release the consoles, uh, our goal is to purchase licenses for existing titles, such as Fortnite, Minecraft, EA Sports titles, uh, et cetera. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the presentation. And once the profit is good enough to, uh, or once the profit is high enough to work with, we are going to hire a small developmental team to focus on original titles, which will also be talked about later in the presentation. Um, a little bit of history on iOS and macOS, uh, which, I, which I just briefly explained. Uh, macOS is the second most widely used desktop operating system behind Windows, which is a Microsoft product. Um, and iOS is the second most popular mobile operating system behind Android, which is a direct competitor to Apple. Um, talking about the gaming engines such as Unity, Java, Frostbite, CryEngine, things of that nature, um, Mac OS is already capable of running these engines, and iOS runs a mobile version of these engines, but they haven't, ha they haven't been able to run at full capability on their uh, mobile devices, which is what the portable console is going to take advantage of. Yeah. Um, this is just uh, some, these are some statistics on mobile games revenue. Um, as you can see, it's more than doubled in the past five years alone, and 64% of these sales are from Apple devices. Now that sounds a little bit counterintuitive because uh, Android is the most widely used phone in the world. However, people uh, typically spend more from the App Store than they do from Google Play. <clears throat> Uh, and then this is just a history of how Apple has purchased licenses before. Uh, Apple purchased eMagic back in 2002 for 30, th I'm sorry, $300 million. Um, it was a music software and they eventually integrated it to become GarageBand. Um, Siri, I'm sure everybody has heard of Siri at one point or another. Um, it was originally not even an Apple product. Um, it was sold to Apple by Siri Incorporated for over $200 million. There isn't an exact number out there, but uh, it has been confirmed that it was over $200 million. Um, it's the voice recognition software, and it did become Siri, which is one of the most uh, satirized and most uh, pop culture heavy. You need to step above. Uh, yeah. Um, 
and Apple purchased Beats Electronics back in 2011. Beats was a brand new electronic company started by Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. Um, they created new uh, headphones that were able to hear, you would be able to hear everything more clearly. Um, and then they expanded into a streaming service known as Beats Music. Uh, Apple purchased that back in 2011 for three billion dollars. So they wanted to integrate that streaming service and the headphones into their own company. Uh, the streaming service is now defunct and it is running under Apple Music, which is a similar user interface um, to Beats Music. I should know, I used to have Beats Music. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, but the headphones still sell out continuously uh, with new models and it was a very big acquisition for Apple. And so this is what we plan to do for, uh, this is how we plan on purchasing existing titles such as or uh, just like how Apple has been able to purchase these and integrate them into their own company. Um, thank you, Jack. Um, Nick, I have, like, uh, just to add on him, if someone is asking if Apple should, can actually buy Fortnite or buy EA Sports or this stuff, yeah, they can do so because Apple has twice as much cash on hand as the um, U.S. government, so they are good. So, continuing on the innovation that we are planning to do, we are planning on purchasing some stuff like Fortnite, which is a battle game that uh, have more than 200 million people registering for it. Minecraft and EA a Sports, which are like also games that makes a lot, like many pe people use, many users, uh, wants to play and it's expanding. For example, like I've read somewhere that the CEO um, of Nevada said that he expects everyone in the world to be using uh, mobile game de uh, devices. So I think there is a demand for mobile gaming and if Apple can take an advantage of this, it will help them a lot into like their future. Um, objectives because as you can see like the Apple can, did not improve or innovate a lot in the last five years you cannot say, say there's a huge difference between iPhone like for example 6 and iPhone X um, so I think it's gonna be a good idea if they can take advantage of by, by buying such uh, existing titles like these three also another way they can look at it is that they can create their own uh, titles so for example like Microsoft has Halo, Sony has uh, God of War, Nintendo has Super Mario, The Legends of Zelda I like these are these are like game like these are games that are created and only for Microsoft, Sony or Nintendo and why do I why do we think that this is a good idea is that because as I said that Apple has the ability the money, the people, the resources to be able to uh, create their own mobile game, uh, mobile game or like their own game. And since there is a demand for this, if they have, if they come up with the next PUBG or Fortnite on their mobile phone, then I guess that would be a reason to enter a new market of people who loves gaming, and they would not buy the, the, the Apple iPhone or they will not buy the Apple product except for the gaming uh, part of it. We need to look at competitors that might also take advantage of this and as we kept mentioning earlier that there is Microsoft, there is Sony, there is Nintendo, they all have devices be besides like phones that they can put their games on so that they can sell the device, sell the game, make revenue on this and make revenue on that. So for example, Microsoft owns Xbox, Sony owns uh, PlayStation, and Nintendo owns the Wii. Um, these are like the consoles, sorry, console um, competitors. Looking at the mobile competitors, which is Samsung, uh, Asus and Razer, Asus and Razer. Samsung has the Android devices, which 
they are not as capable of handling mobile games as Apple, but they are still uh, uh, good and they can still improve. And Asus and Razer, which are mo mobile phones that are just uh, done for uh, mobile games, so they are technically uh, PSP. Apple has an advantage over the others because as I said, as I said whenever someone is playing uh, Fortnite now, and my friends are playing are playing Fortnite, looking at the looking at them, they the the the, the friends who has the iOS or the iPhone are enjoying the game more than the people with the Android. So Apple has an advantage in the software and their development of the of the of the iOS. And uh, Microsoft and Sony's phones are not nearly as popular as in terms of sale as Apple. And of course, as I said earlier, that Apple has the like as Jake said that they have the name recognition. They have they can sell like they have been selling the same technically iPhone for the last five years just by changing their name and they still making more, uh, huge profits. Yeah. And also, like back to the earlier slide, the Apple, like they know how to do business. So, for example, whenever they bought uh, Beats, their their reasoning was that the the headphones cost three dollars to manufacture, yet they go paid for hundred, they go sell it for hundreds. So they know how to make money. And on the other hand, they believe that mobile, uh, like music streaming, is gonna take over like CDs and this stuff. So they bought that. A base with a more than uh, eight 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 hundred thousand uh, uh, users, so that they can have a, a huge base that they can build on. How can Apple succeed in innovating? We both think that Apple, if they focus on the on the existing software iOS device, that will be capable of running the games. At the smooth rack. And that also um, that also goes hand in hand with the Mac OS operating system as well. Um, obviously, focusing on one over the other isn't going to get anything done. Um, so, if Apple continues to focus on improving both of them and having those gaming engines run at a smooth rate on those softwares, then that would be the longest and the biggest step that they can do that they can take. Um, in terms of innovating, so that they can succeed, yeah, and also they 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 can make they can succeed by selling uh, by selling my, uh, by having micro transactions, which is like the iOS how the iOS is prefer, uh, performs, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is an Apple Store, and then they can can they can later on if the game if they buy the game or they create the game, they can but like get some devices that will help in the improvement of the game. They can sell these devices separately from the game so that they can make revenue. And since it's a new market, it's an expanding market, and as we saw in the, in the chart, there have been like double revenue in the last five years only from, sell, uh, from mobile games. They would need to listen to their customers. They would need to listen on how to improve. They would need to pay more attention to this customer satisfaction part than they will use they would normally learn like they would normally do with with buying some something like beats because it's already a brand that everyone uses something that's becoming increasingly apparent as well uh piggybacking off of the last bullet point um customer service is getting more and more transparent by the day um people are disinterested they are turned off from the games because customer service is very robotic. Uh, typically, has the same answer, the same pre-recorded answers. Um, so Apple can really stand to make, and, and Apple is a big. Uh, they're at fault here as well, just for their customer service, uh, and my experiences with it. And I've had some other people tell me about their experiences with it. However. 
um, if they can improve on that and if they can jump right out of the gate with good customer feedback, uh, or I'm sorry, good customer service um, and connecting well with their customers with this gaming division, then that would put them a large step ahead of uh, the other gaming competitors like Microsoft and Sony. Yeah, and this was the end of our presentation. I hope that you guys are gonna consider that and hopefully Apple will get more revenues through this. Thank you. Thank you.